I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! You know, sometimes when I get way too excited, my voice goes up a couple octaves. So I can't help but think about that every time I ever look at that clip. Mark, anyway. Mark Crispino. <laughs> oh, <my leg! laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to the ATR yeah. Bar Talk segment, where we are engaging our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. It could be a beer, it could be a shot, or you could be buying everybody around. And we're going to start with this one. The Rangers will stand pat if they do not acquire Jack Eichel. John. Uh, buying everybody around. Because <laughs> if, if, they, if they don't get Jack Eichel, I, I, I don't know what other moves are left. I know that there was a comment uh, before our show went on um, saying that um, someone has a friend within the organization and saying that they're, they're looking to acquire a power player, quote, unquote. Um, I don't know. AZ. What's that? That was AZ. AZ. Okay. So it was AZ. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly who that could be. I'm hoping to God it's not Sean Monahan because I, I don't want to, uh, I, I really don't want him, but, um, I would, I would say they're probably going to stand pat if they don't acquire Eichel. So I'm buying everybody around on this. Anthony. I'm going round two. You know, it's August 11th, as I stated, and that is really going to happen between now and training camp. So, um, if they don't get Eichel, you know, by the time camp starts, again, it's a really hard time to make a move. I don't see who else is out there that could, they could realistically get. Um, so, yeah, you know, round for me as well. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make it a clean sweep. I'm going to buy a round two because, after all, if um, they don't get Eichel, it, it is, they're probably going to stand pat because it's it's difficult. Not many pl- big name players move that late into training camp or anything. Eric Cross being the last one um, that I know is the next pressure point, as Chris Johnston said on the Steve Dangle podcast. But the other thing also is, I mean, the other guy I can remember is Chris Osgood moved late because that's when the pressure of the salary cap kicks in. They, that's when they have to to figure it all out. Buffalo doesn't have to worry about the pressure of the salary cap and the neither do the Rangers. So it's just, everybody's going to slot on in. All right. Um, moving on the range. Oh, there's a typo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. The Rangers will need <laughs> Capo Caco to break out to make the playoffs. Uh, Anthony, this, uh, this, I believe you posted this one. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be here, especially if they don't get Jack Eichel. If they don't get Jack Eichel, they pretty much have the same team in the top six, at least offense player wise. Um, you know, the, the Metro is gonna be really hard. Obviously, there are teams in the Atlantic that that have been improved from you know two years ago. Like Florida will be a, will be competing for a playoff spot. So. Um, I think for the Rangers to get a leg up, they could really use Kako to really become that player that they expect him to be when they drafted him, you know, second overall. Because if he has – defensively, he's, he's developed into a really good player. But if offensively he puts up the same type of season as he did last year, um, you know, that might hurt the Rangers because they're going to need production from, from some. A Kreider will have to step up. Lafford maybe breaks out. But um, I think Kako performing offensively will go a long way and then making the playoffs. So – um, I'm going to say beer only because I, I think they still can, even if he doesn't, if some other things happen. But uh, it would really be a huge plus if he does. Phil? Um, yeah, and I've actually said this before. Um, I've said this many times before that their their success would depend on the production of the three young kids, Kaka, Lafreniere, and Kravtsov. And if those three could come in and replace Pablo Butchnevich's production, then they would probably be a playoff team because of the fact that you really beefed up your bottom six you added some toughness, and a lot of the guys are going to be a younger. Uh, the younger guys are going to be a year more experienced. So yeah, uh, I'm buying everybody around on this one. So, um, I'm actually going to go beer, and the reason why is because I don't think they need. I'm going to use the word need in this for Kako to be uh, this huge 
performer right away. I think they can definitely get away with him. Um, maybe he gets the 20 goals. Uh, if he gets the 20 goals, then I guess that would say he breaks out. But it, let's say he has like 18. Now, I'm, I'm fine with that for one more year. Um, however, his defensive stats, everybody has pointed out, his uh, analytics, they're, they're off the charts. So that's the reason why he's going to have a lot of guys that take pressure off of him. You, Artemi Panarin, uh, Mika Zibanejad, and and I think Chris Kreider moving down in the lineup is going to change uh, his role. And I do believe they're going to move Kreider down in the lineup, either at the beginning or later on. All right. The Islanders' 13-game road trip to open the season is a blessing, not a curse. Anthony? Um. I'm going to go beer. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times when you see that, like when the teams open new arenas, I know when the Devils opened the Prudential Center, they had a nine or 10 game road trip. So a lot of times you see that and you're like, oh, that's a really rough way to start the season. It could bury them, um, which is true. But, you know, at the same time, they're going to be away for 13 games. The guys are going to be together. I think it's a good time to bond. I mean, they're already a tight knit group, but I think going on a, the ro- a road trip that long, coming off being so close to the Stanley Cup final, I think they're going to bond. I think they'll become even closer. Um, and it gets like the dreaded West Coast trip out of the way early. They don't have to worry about that after the beginning of the season. Uh, they'll have more home games in their pocket at a new arena. So, um, I mean, it's, it's not prime, but I, I also don't think it's, it is a death blow or a curse. I think the Island, this could be a good thing for the Islanders for those reasons I just laid out. So, um, I'm going to go beer on that. Phil. Um, for the basically the same reasons, I'm going beer. Yeah, I, I and not only for, to further add on that, you'd much rather have this at the beginning of the season than at the end of the season have a long road trip away. I mean, and not that a long road trip would necessarily hurt a team, but um, yeah, you 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 want to have this earlier on and get this out of the way and deal with the adversity that it could give you. And like Anthony said, it, it, it's a team bonding experience. You're going to be on the road with these guys. You spend more more time together. It's a, it's a team building team. And you know what? It's a litmus test for the Islanders. You know, you'll you'll see what they're made of 13 games in. And if they start off, you know, real well with those 13 games, that's a huge momentum boost going back to UBS because you know those fans are going to be foaming at the mouth for games, and it's going to carry them. It's going to help them. So it's. It, it, you know what? Honestly, it, if it works out for them, it, it could be a key part to their season. So um, I'm going to say beer here. You know what? I'm changing my answer. I was going to say beer, but now I'm going to buy everybody because now, now, because again, it, it's all going to even out anyway. They don't have long home stands, but they they got they got plenty of time where they're they're with everybody. Um, they're they already know, kind of know what they are. They're the same team as they were the year before. They're the same team as they were two years ago. Um, ju- it's just a matter of do they get uh, some of these mystery free agents on the roster, or uh, who knows, maybe Lil will wait till opening night to to file the paperwork. Um, but it's it's also like do they get Tarasenko? That's where the other thing comes in. And I'm glad what Anthony says because um, the first thing I look for every single season, whenever the schedule comes out, is when's the West Coast trips. And the thing, the difference between hockey and all the other sports is it's West Coast trips. You have two, one to Northern Canada and one to through California. And now uh, Seattle's in the mix. So there's another thing because after all, every single sport, whenever they talk about it, the longest trip anybody has to go is uh, Seattle to uh, Miami. So you, you definitely don't even want to be on that flight. Um Moving on to the next one, and I'm going to start this one off. Lou Lamorello's delaying. Uh, <laughs> Another typo in there, too. There's a typo. You yeah. son of a bitch. That's, uh, <laughs> the, funny, the funny part is you son of a bitch is really me. And I still have to put up our blooper reel. Uh, uh, Lou Lamorello's delayed. Oh, is a sap circumvention. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Sap, as in uh, Alice in Chains album? Mm. Wait, this, they had an Alice in Chains album? Sap? Was it one of yes. the new ones? Okay, so that's why I haven't... That I got haven't... me wrong on it. Oh, okay. All right. 
Yeah, I always had that from the Clerks soundtrack. Anyway, Lou Lamoureux delayed filing a contract. This is a cap circumvention. I'm going to start this one off. It's it's gamesmanship, but you know what? I got to buy everybody around. You, this at sooner or later, you're going to have to do. You're going to have to stop from doing this or make a time limit on there because it's just you, you can't be having this go on forever. I. Think it's definitely to make sure he's got cap space to re-sign guys, and then he fits in the agreements on what what he's going to get for the other guys. So, Anthony, that's your boy. Um, I got. I, I mean, obviously, it's what he's doing. It's not against the CBA um, yet, but I mean, it kind of, I mean, it kind of is. I, I'm, I'm inclined to go around on this because. You know, let's face it, the guy, the guy has contracts agreed upon, and he just chooses not to file them. I mean, I, I know, like I just said, it's not it's not illegal according to the CBA, but, I mean, what he's doing, it, it's genius, but it kind of, I'm not going to be a homer, it kind of is circumventing the cap. Um, I don't know how many GMs can get away with this aside from him. You know, I don't know if in the, in the future they put, you know, try to nip this in the bud, but um, what he's doing, it works because... Like uh, Peñona had told me, it's 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 when he talks to other whatever move he's got conjuring up, whether it's a trade for a D man or or Tarasenko, the other team. Let's say if he's trying to get St. Louis to to retain salary, they don't know exactly how much the Islanders really need them to do it because they don't know how much cap space he has committed to these guys yet. Um, so it's it's a masterful job, but what he's doing, it's it's definitely borderline on on kind of circumventing the cap, you know. Um, and it just goes to show these players and agents how much they trust Lou Lamorello because the agents were Paul Murray, Parise, Sezikis. There have been no leaks about anything. They've never been linked to any other teams and rumors. Um, so it just goes to show how much they respect him and trust him that they keep everything under wraps. But um, it's kind of hilarious how Lou is doing this. It, it really is. Well, again, you can get more information about the Stonecutters than you can about uh... – uh, from Will Amarillo on his signings. Silk. Yeah. I'm with Anthony on this one again. I'm going to have to buy a round. Uh, it just, it, while he's technically, it, it, it's illegal in a sense, and it's not because, I mean, he technically hasn't reported anything. I mean, they can come to handshake agreements and not report anything. If you remember, Glenn Sather had a handshake agreement with, I believe it was uh, Len Barry, to trade Steven Stamkos to the Rangers. And it was never filed with Central Registry. So the trade never went through, and Oren Coles nixed the trade for Steven Stamkos. So, I mean, technically, it's, a, it's, it's the same principle. Um, I, I do think, however, when the next CBA comes around, I think that might be something that might be addressed at that point. So um, I'm yeah. buying everybody around right now. And, and there's going to be a lot of things they're going to talk about in, in the new CBA. And I wouldn't be surprised if this situation comes up. The Minnesota Wild should trade Kirill Kaprizov's rights. I'll start this one. Um, shot. Uh, the reason why y you can't. You can't. If if you do it, you're buckling. You're giving up on a great young talent that this team that desperately needs. Um, it's there's certain situations people talk about. Usually, the NCAA players waiting out their uh, their rights to go some, be free agents and sign with anybody. Um, the Russian players too, to stay in the KHL and then waiting out their rights. He, he's coming off his rookie season. He's already trying to get an $8 million deal. That's insane. Like entry level deal. You get three years. That, that's it. Um, but I also, if Minnesota trades him, they are so far back. They, they might as well be tanking for Shane, Wright. So Phil, what do you think? I'm going to say beer here. And the reason for that being is that you have to gauge whether he's trying to do this to get more money or whether he legitimately wants out of it. That's, that's the internal discussion right now. Um, you obviously want this guy around. Um, I, I, I don't see a 70. I, I know he was on pace for about 40 goals and 70 points as a rookie. 
but I I don't think that that's his ceiling. I I think he could be an eighty to ninety point player, and he's the type that's not going to need much help around him to do so. Uh, I mean, this is a real game breaker right here. I mean, look at what he did with Matt Zuccarello and Victor Rask. The those line mates, and no disrespect to either one of them. You know, I love Zuccarello, great playmaker, very good player, solid solid in both his own zone and the offensive zone. Um, but Victor Rask is the worst player on that line by a it, landslide. And he's the sh- a shade of what he was in, in Carolina. Yeah, I, 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 he's not even that good of a player. I, I mean, he's he's really a second liner at best on most teams that have cup aspirations. So um, if if this is a a, a money if if it's a, if it's a power move, then no, you're not trading his rights at that point. Just give him the damn money. Because he's going to be your franchise player. Uh, if if he legitimately wants to go back home, then trade his rights. Trade his rights. So I'm saying beer. Anthony. So I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you guys here, and uh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go round, but it's under the caveat if he's really gonna go back to the KHL. There's the reported I sent you guys the other day from Sierra Valley that he apparently. Uh, starting September 1st, he's got a deal, a one-year deal at CSK Moscow for like eight or ten million. If if he's gonna really play there, um, yeah, sure. The Wild could be sticklers and say, okay, well, listen, it's either play for us or you're not playing the National Hockey League until you're you come back in free agent in three years and you can sign where you want to sign. You kind of split your nose to, uh, off from your face that way. But why do that? I mean, why just let him go play in the KHL for three years? Trade him now. At least get something for him. You would get you would get a boatload for him right now if you would trade him. Despite him wanting eight to nine million, teams would line up to get him, and you would get you would get a lot of assets back, picks, prospects, probably even pretty good young player. Um, again, that's only he's really gonna just take his ball and go to Russia, trade him. Because let's face it, he the, all recounts is it's not the money is the issue; it's the it's the term. He he'll help the Wild have no problem giving the eight nine million. It's he wants a two to three year deal, so could, he could walk right to unrestricted free agency. The Wild want to give him a, a six, seven, eight year deal, and he wants no part of that. He wants to be able to pull a Panarin and basically choose where he can play in three years from now. Uh, it's not that the money is the issue; it's the term. And the Wild are going to have to buckle and give him, and at least give him a four year deal. They're going to have to because if they stay firm on a six, seven, eight year deal, he'll he'll call their bluff and he'll go play. In the KHL this year, so um, and if that's going to happen, then yeah, his rights. Because yeah, sure, you could say screw you, fine. You're not playing the NHL until you're an unrestricted free agent, but then you're losing him for nothing. And then he comes back in three year, two to three years anyway, and he signs where he wants to play. So uh, that that's my take on it. But um, overall, just just give him compromise, give him a four year deal. And if that's deal the case, down the road. And and Granny, yes, you were you were talking about this before, how him not being able to speak the language, not knowing anybody during the lockdown. Again, the lockdown was definitely the worst uh, situation for him to for uh, a kid to just come over from another country and try to like learn the language, uh, try to try to grow as a player, try to get acclimated. He could very easily come over right now. I think also um, the idea that he's going to get more money than. Uh, 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 Kovalchuk got that a lot of, and and I think any player in the KHL has ever gotten is is ridiculous. And the other thing is, there's some reports in Moscow saying, or it's from Russian newspapers or Russian hockey sites saying that they don't have a trade and that you basically wouldn't be able to field a team because the ripples uh, wouldn't match up. So it's. It, it's I just no I, I and also it then you have to worry about the KHL trying to poach players KHL doesn't want to do that well they do, they do want to do that but then they're still like the NHL definitely won't want that happen so all right we're gonna move on from Kirill Kaprizov to uh, another guy oh man Carter Hart will rebound <laughs> so much that he'll make Team Canada Anthony I'm going with you to start this. Um, I'm, I'm going shot. Um, you know, this is a guy that was touted as the next coming of Carey Price and 
you know, uh, top goaltender in the league, be the future guy in goal for Team Canada. Um, but last year he was he was terrible. I would say by far out of the out of the thirty one teams who had starting goalies, he was statistically he was might have been the thirty first. He was really bad. Um, you know, I mean, listen, the Flyers were a tire fire at times, so it cut him a little bit of slack. And he he still is young. So while I think he will be a lot better this coming season, I just think it, it's, it's too short of a time to turn it around to trust him with a spot on Team Canada. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see it happening unless they're, unless they're really desperate in goal. Um, but actually, who knows? Carey Price, I, I believe he was having some sort of surgery in the offseason. I'm not sure if that's going to affect his, his availability in the beginning of the season or whatnot. I mean, that could play a role in it, but... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it. Yes, so it's a shot for me. I do think he will be better because um, I don't think he's like a bust all of a sudden. Um, but I don't know if he's going to be able to have that, that outstanding of a beginning of the year that they're going to make him place him on Team Canada as one of the three goalies. Phil, really, 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 <laughs> really, <laughs> really. I'm I'm pretty sure Sean probably gets my Miz reference there with the reallys, but um, yeah, yeah. this is I, which one of you made this question? Uh, Anthony. <laughs> wow, Anthony. I didn't word wow. it like that. Yeah, uh, wow. You changed but, the wording of it a little bit, but I, I changed the wording to make it a little bit shorter, so it would be bigger. Yeah. yeah. Um. No. All all jokes aside, Team Canada does not have great goaltending right now. That's right. <laughs> And that's that's the only reason why this is even remotely possible is because their goaltending really isn't great. Who was it? Flurry? Is Flurry just won the Vezina? He's Canadian, but he's thirty seven. Do you really think they're going to take a a, a, a thirty seven year old into uh, into into the Olympics as their starter? I mean, who else is real for them? Carey Price. I don't know if I trust Carey Price after the the finals that he had. And the regular season that he had, he had three great playoff rounds against two teams that were one was a choker and two was without their top center. So um, I, I I don't know if I trust Carey Price, um, but I am I'm gonna say I'm gonna say beer here because like I said, it's <laughs> the lack of goaltending depth in Toronto. Or I mean in Toronto in Canada. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, think that uh, I don't think it's possible, but there is an outside shot of it. He did say beer, I Anthony. Well, we lost you for a minute, and here's the funny part: beer. And it's not even that I think Carter Hart's going to rebound because, unfortunately, Carter Hart plays in the goalie graveyard of Philadelphia. Um, there, they had Bernie Perrant, Ron Hextall, and everybody since. Ron Hextall was traded the first time. Um, has just never really uh, measured up. And they even had some good goalies because usually they're good for one season and they're gone. I, I, and again, I like Carter Hart. I had him in fantasy two years ago. Uh, but these are your choices. You were going over those, John. Kerry, uh, Kerry Price, Marc-Andre Fleury, and I think the third string probably could be Mackenzie Blackwood or Jordan Bennington. Ooh. Probably Jordan Bennington, and I, I, Jordan Bennington has not been impressive since his little run from January of 2019 to June of 2019. So I know. I mean, take away his rookie year, you, you don't exactly have much. Yeah. And um, I mean, I think Carter Hart is going to rebound a little bit, but I'm not sure if he's going to rebound enough to make Team Canada. But then again, I'm going to Team Canada is going to have enough. To have goaltending, this is this is actually why this is a good question, Anthony. Because I don't even know what Team Canada is going to have. I mean, we know USA is going to have good goaltending. We know Russia is going to have good goaltending. Um, who's going to be the Swedish goalie now that Lundqvist isn't there anymore? Robin Lehner. Who was it? Robin Lehner. Okay. All right. So that's at least a good goalie. I mean, there's there's I mean, there's plenty of the other ones that you're just going. All right, well, what are we gonna get on that? I don't know. We're gonna say. Oh, so yeah, this I think I said beer for me. So, what's um, 
And we heard you, Which but you were choppy. Philip Grubauer nationality. German, isn't he? Philip Grubauer, I, his nationality. I, I think he's German. Yeah. By the way, um, yes. you know what? Yeah, he's anybody, German. Anybody else think it's crazy just to think about that? Um, three, two of the three Vesna Trophy finalists are dealt away this this off season. That's that's nuts to me. It's absolutely nuts. Um. Okay. Well. Okay. Anthony's fixing his camera. So, what do you guys think? Uh, should Kirill Kaprizov get traded? Is Capocacco the key to the Rangers making the playoffs next year? Uh, the Islanders, 13 games on the road, blessing or a curse? And Carter Hart, he's going to rebound or just give up rebounds like he was doing last year. Put it all you right missed, down uh, the You missed floor. one topic. You cut it out. Oh, wait, what was it? Hold on. Uh, Seattle will make the playoffs this season. Oh, I didn't cut it out. I just didn't see it on there. Oh, you have it. T- you added it today. <laughs> All right, Seattle will make the playoffs this season. <laughs> Let me. Um, I'm gonna type it in, but as I'm typing it in, I'll say, uh, no, they're not. So, uh, shot for me. Uh, <laughs> with that roster, no way. Their defense is okay, oh. but their, fo- their forward group is just awful. It's awful. Uh, I mean, I know you have guys like Mason Appleton, you know, who can, you know, be better, but uh, I, I, I don't see where they get their production from. Yanni Gord's your top center. Who's out for, I think, two months. Because he's getting surgery. I don't know. I, I think I'm, I go beer on that. I mean, they're they're unequivocally better than Anaheim. They're better. They're better than San Jose. Um, then you have you have L.A. I mean, L.A. You added Dano and uh, and Arvidsson. They they probably won't be better than L.A. But um, but then again, that division. If you look at it, obviously Vegas is a lock, and then you have Edmonton likely a lock. That third that third split that third playoff spot. Would come down to Calgary, Vancouver, L.A., Seattle. I mean, are any of those teams far and away better? I mean, Calgary. I don't think Calgary's defense is is really that good with Giordano. I mean, you have Noah Hannafin, um, you know, Rasmus Anderson, what, Nikita Zadorov. I mean, no, Pablo that defense Flemington. is garbage. I mean. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I mean, they they upgraded him yet with Markstrom. But... Quick's washed up. Peterson's young. I mean, he's he's okay. And then and then Seattle Grubauer. I mean, Grubauer was a was a veteran candidate. I mean, he's out of Markstrom and you know Demko. When we're talking about Vancouver, I think Seattle's got the edge on both of them in goal. I just think about something uh, Samuel Jackson was going with the. Um... Uh, in or saying in uh, Jurassic Park, we have all of the problems of a zoo trying to open and a theme park trying to open. You're talking about an expansion team that is trying to establish themselves. And again, I'm not a big Dave Haxtall fan. I think he can. I think he's learned from his time in Philly. It's just, uh, I, and I understand that division is is pretty much a train wreck that basically you have um, mm-hmm. a Vegas, then I'd say Edmonton. And then that third yeah. spot's a toss up because the other so, exactly. playoff spot coming exactly. out of the third third central. So I'm still saying it's mm-hmm. a shot. It's a, it's a long way so to that's go. That's why it's. That's why I, it's a good I'm question. Going beer just because I do think they could be better than Vancouver or Calgary or LA. I mean, a lot of a lot of those teams have flaws. All right. Well, my apologies that I didn't see this question until you reminded me about it. But so do you guys think Seattle's going to make the playoffs? That's right. In the comments below. All right. Let's do some honest press conferences. <laughs> 